hello everyone and welcome back to glancer before we get started if you are new to the channel and haven't subscribed yet make sure to hit that subscribe button and click the bell icon so you never miss an update my previous video we have discussed something called a system paradigm so in this particular video we are going to discuss about word sets and systems so why do you why do we use this particular kind of word sets and systems is it is same as paradigm. Why we use system paradigms? We use the system paradigms in order to tackle the problems while doing meaning representations, right? So here also we will be using the words and systems in the same way. Why we are using this words and systems is might be uh, in some particular sentence there might be this disambiguation problem. In order to uh, recover from this disambiguation problem, we are using something called as words and systems. So again, these words and systems are divided into four main categories. So that is nothing but the first one is rule based, second is supervised, third is unsupervised, and fourth is semi supervised. In my last video, I've already gave you general info about this main categories. So in this particular uh, video, we are only going to learn about rule based or knowledge based in a more detailed manner. Okay. So now let's start. Okay. The first is rule based. It you can also call it as knowledge based. There is no problem with that. So let's see the first point. What is the first point? Rule based systems for word sense disambiguation are among the earliest methods developed to tackle the problem of determining the correct meaning of a word based on its context. So you are going to use this particular systems in order to tackle the problems like word sense disambiguation. What, what is the main role of this kind of systems is they are going to uh, tackle the problem by finding the correct meaning of that particular word. Okay. These particular systems rely heavily on dictionaries, thesauri and handcrafted rules. I've already said that uh, this particular rule based there you will be storing some predefined rules in that particular database and you are going to use those uh, predefined rules in order to tackle a problem so what what that uh, what are those databases it might be dictionary database or it might be the sorry database or it might be handcrafted rules so if you take general dictionary you will be having oxford dictionary right there if there if you uh, look at that particular dictionary what it will be having it will be having a collection of words for that particular collection of words you will be having meaning for that particular word and you will be having the parts of speech and at the same time you will be having the pronunciation of that particular word so uh, this particular system it is relying on dictionary databases and at the same time they are relying on thesauri what is mean by thesauri thesauri is nothing but it is a book where you will be having different words and also their synonyms what i mean by synonyms synonyms are nothing but you will be having different words but the meaning to those words will be the same right so you will be having you will be using the sorry database in this particular rule based systems and at the same time handcrafted rules that is nothing but human annotated data predefined rules whatever so these particular systems mainly depend on these kind of knowledge bases okay so now let's go through the algorithms and techniques. So the first algorithm in, we use in order to tackle the word sense disambiguation problem is LESC algorithm. So the first point says that one of the simplest and oldest dictionary based algorithms. So this particular LESC algorithm is based on the dictionary. It will be using this particular dictionary database in order to tackle the word sense disambiguation. Okay. And the second thing you have is the algorithm assigns the sense of a word that has the most overlap in terms of words with the words in its context. See, what does this mean is how you are going to understand the context of that particular sentence. Maybe you have a target word with different meanings. That target word is having different meanings. That is where a word sense disambiguation problem arises, right? So how you are going to understand the context of that particular sentence is maybe you are going to understand the meanings of the surrounding words of the target word that is how you are going to understand the context see if you want to get a clear understanding i will also give you the example here see take the example as the word bank let's say in a particular sentence uh, let me write the sentence wait i went to bank 
I went to bank to deposit money. See, this is the sentence. In that sentence, this is the tar target word. Why you are saying this is this as the target word is? This is where the word sense disambiguation is arising. This particular bank will be having two different meanings. In, uh, one is in the financial sense and the other is river bank. Right. So here where the disambiguation problem arising. So how we are going to tackle this by using this less algorithm is you are going to watch the surrounding words of that particular target word. Based on that only you are going to understand the context of this particular sentence. See, in this example, if the word bank appears in a context with words like money and deposit, the financial sense of bank is chosen. See, uh, here you can see the surrounding words as deposit and bank. Mostly when, when these particular kinds of words appear, what the man what the meaning of this bank will come it, it it is in the form of financial sense only right but you can't say uh, this is the river bank here already they clearly mentioned in the sentence that you are going to deposit the money if you take the river bank you are not going to deposit the money in a river bank right you are going to deposit the money in a bank there you can understand this bank means in the financial sense only not a river bank right so this is the less algorithm and the second is enhanced less less algorithm you can say this is an extension of less algorithm so these are the two two people who extended this particular less algorithm what they have done is they have extended uh, by including the synonyms hypernyms hyponyms and meronyms in the less algorithm you have only used the dictionary knowledge base right but in this enhanced less algorithm, they have also included the synonyms, which is nothing but different words will be having the same meaning. And the hypernyms is nothing but, see, here I have written more general terms. Okay, what is mean by that is, see, we are talking about superheroes. So we are talking about superheroes. In superheroes, you will be having different superheroes like Spider-Man, Batman, Iron Man, whatever. If you are talking about superheroes, you are talking about superheroes and not a specific superhero. You are talking about all superheroes in a more general way. That is nothing but a hypernyme. And what is mean by hypernyme? Hypernyme means nothing but you are talking about only Spider-Man. It is more specific way. We are talking about only Spider-Man, then it is mean by hyponymes. And what is mean by meronymes? Meronymes is nothing but, uh, it is a part of something which is used to refer the whole of it. So let's take the example as, uh, I see several familiar faces. This is faces. What it means actually, what it means I see several familial faces. What is mean by faces here? Faces refers to people. I have seen many familiar people there. Instead of saying people, I have referred it as faces. So people is the whole part. But this is only some part of the people. Okay. So this is nothing but meronyme. Meronyme is nothing but you are including the small part of the whole thing. If you have extended this particular uh, algorithm, definitely you, you need to have some advantage. Right? Then what is that advantage is? It increases the accuracy. What is mean by accuracy? Accuracy is nothing but the correctness. Coming to the structural semantic interconnections. So this is not an algorithm. It is a technique. Okay. So this is proposed by these two people. And the second point is construct semantic graphs using resources like WordNet, domain labels, and annotated corpora. So we will discuss uh, this about this particular resources in the further videos. In this particular technique, what they are going to do is they are going to use this certain resources in order to construct the semantic graphs. So until they get to know the context of that particular word, they will iteratively construct the semantic graphs to that particular word. So the, the, it is an it is an recursive process you are constructing one semantic graph then you then you will or uh, then you will check if that particular uh, context is matching if if it is not matching again you are going to build a semantic graph until it matches 
you are going to build a semantic graphs okay so now let's discuss the working of rule based the first thing is context collection what is mean by context collection here see in order to understand the context of that particular sentence first you have to understand the surrounding words if a particular sentence is given there it is getting the disambiguation problem then in order to eradicate that disambiguation problem there you have to understand the surrounding words if you get to know about the surrounding words then it is easy for you to understand the meaning of that particular sentence right and the second is dictionary thesaurus matching see here you have collected the related words that is surrounding words so let's take the example of uh, this particular i have uh, here i have said one example right i went to bank to deposit money there the surrounding words are money and the other is uh, deposit right and the other is deposit so these are the surrounding words of the given example then the second uh, thing is you have to you have to match it with the dictionary database and thesaurus you you just match i mean you just search for this particular words in the dictionary after you matching them then you have to assign the weights to this particular money or deposit so you take money weight as 0 first and the deposit weight as 0 okay now while you are uh, going through this dictionary matching if you found money at that particular word then you increase that particular weight with one at the same time if you found deposit there then you increase it by one so you will be doing it multiple number of times right if you and then in the fourth point you have to select the sense you have in the sense selection what you have to do is you have to select the particular word which is having the more weight let's say for money you will be having the total weight as 10 so you have to select this because it is having more weight so if you select this particular word here only you can say that money means nothing but in the financial sense so the so you can conclude that bank here in this particular sentence bank means in the financial sense only so this is about the working of rule based systems and the other is the advantages so what is the advantages of this particular rule based systems is so first one is it is very simple and it is also an intu intuitive approach so what is mean by intuitive intuitive is nothing but um you are going to understand this particular systems without any proofs that is nothing but intuitive and the second point is second advantages can be very effective when precise dictionary definitions or thesaurus categories are available see i have already said that this particular rule based systems mostly rely on the dictionaries thesaurus and predefined rules so it it is only effective when you use these databases only if there are no databases like dictionaries present here then it would be waste of using this kind of rule based systems and the second is limitations what are the limitations of it it is heavily reliant on the availability and quality of lexical resources i have already said in that if you going to have only the databases then it will be effective if you don't have any databases like this or any resources like this then it is not that much useful right and the second point is hand crafted rules can be labor intensive and may not cover all possible context there is another knowledge base like it it also uses predefined set of rules right who will give that predefined rules to the system human human will give so there involves the labor thing right maybe sometimes even if you have annotated data sometimes it won't cover all the pos possible context so these are the uh, limitations of that particular rule based systems so in the next video we are going to discuss about the other words and systems either it might be supervised systems so thank you so much for watching till end and i have also noticed that many of you were watching my content but haven't subscribed yet if you feel these lectures are really helping you please consider subscribing to the channel it really motivates me to create more content like this and don't forget to like and share with your friends who might find it useful see you in the next video thank you